Ship dry dock periods are just as important to fleet readiness as deployments are. Petty Officer Kirk Putnam tells us how USS John S. McCain has taken a huge step forward in its maintenance period. The commanding officer of McCain, Commander Chad Graham, said the crew of McCain conducted deep level repair and preservation efforts, and by doing it themselves have already saved the Navy more than $400,000. This has been a big milestone for us to be able to get water under the keel, float the ship, and see that a lot of the work that they did is holding. Uh, you know, it's one step closer to sailing again, and that's what every single one of us wants to do, is get back out to sea and support the operations in 7th Fleet. Commander Graham said the ship still has a few months of repairs left before they are deployment ready, but the hard work of his crew has already paid off. Petty Officer Kirk Putnam, Yokosuka Naval Base, Japan. By an Imperial Japanese submarine in the Philippine Sea. It sank in 12 minutes, making it impossible to send a distress signal or use most of its life-saving equipment. Prior to its attack, the Indianapolis completed a secret mission to deliver a piece of the atomic bomb used in Hiroshima. USS John S. McCain was involved in a collision with a merchant ship. The collision occurred east of the Straits of Malacca. Currently, 10 sailors are missing and 5 are injured. A family assistance center has been established. Search and rescue efforts continue in coordination with local authorities. Good evening. I'm Admiral Scott Swift, the uh, commander of uh, U.S. Pacific Fleet. Uh, I've got a brief statement to make, and uh, I'll take your uh, questions following that statement. As most of you know, the guided missile destroyer USS John McCain was involved in a collision with a merchant vessel, Alnick MC, while underway east of the Straits of Malacca yesterday at 5.24 a.m. local time, Monday, August 21st. McCain was transiting to a routine port visit in Singapore when the collision occurred. Right now, we are still searching for our 10 missing sailors. That remains our focus. Our thoughts and prayers continue to be with the families of those sailors and the families of our sailors who were injured. Ships and aircraft from the Royal Malaysian Navy and Republic of Singapore Navy joined search efforts yesterday and continue to provide assistance along with aircraft from the USS America. The U.S. Navy and Marine Corps divers joined a search today assess, assessing sealed compartments in damaged parts of the ship. The divers were able to locate some remains in those sealed compartments during their search today. Additionally, the Malaysian Navy has reported that they have located potential remains. They are working to confirm and identify those remains. As more information comes in, we will make it available. While the search and rescue efforts continue, I sincerely thank our Singapore partners, our Malaysia partners, and everyone who has responded with urgency, compassion, and tireless commitment. Four of the five sailors injured were medically evacuated by a Singapore Navy helicopter to a hospital in Singapore for non-life-threatening injuries the fifth injured sailor was transferred after John S. McCain arrived here in port. I visited with those sailors earlier today, and they are doing well. John S. McCain and America arrived in Changi Naval Base yesterday afternoon. While both ships are in Singapore, America is providing messing and berthing services to John S. McCain crew members and supporting damage control efforts on board which are focused on dewatering the ship and restoring auxiliary systems. Our priority here in Singapore is taking care of the crew and their families, ensuring they have all the resources they need and are updated on the status of their ship and their shipmates. I visited with the crew today. They are tough and they are resilient. It is clear that their damage control efforts saved their ship and saved lives. 
I ask all of you to keep the affected sailors and their families in your thoughts and prayers and respect their privacy. Families who are seeking information can call our crisis hotline and we are continuing to provide updated information as soon as we get it via social media accounts and the Seventh Fleet website. From my visit in John S. McCain today, I can tell you that she has sustained significant damage to her port side aft. The flooding was halted, but the extent of the damage is still being determined. We will conduct a thorough and full investigation into this collision, what occurred, what happened, and how it happened. As you know, this collision happened within two months of one another. The collision involving the U.S. Fitzgerald, which caused the death of seven sailors, and earlier this year, there were two other incidences involving surface ships in the Western Pacific. One tragedy like this is one too many. And while each of these four events is unique, they cannot be used, they cannot be viewed in isolation. I welcome the broad comprehensive review announced by our Chief of Naval Operations. I talked this morning with Admiral Davidson on the phone and look forward to working with him as the senior surface warfare officer in the Navy to find out whether this is there is a common cause at the root of these events, and if so, how we solve that. We will implement the operational pause that Sea announced across all fleets, and that will include all units in the Pacific and will be completed by August 28th. In addition, I have directed a second phase that will be focused on all surface ships deployed in the Pacific, including those forward deployed naval forces in Yokosuka and Sasebo. This second phase will be a deliberate reset for our ships, focused on a number of areas such as navigation, ships mechanical systems, and bridge resource management. It will involve training and assessment by a team of experts with each ship and their watchstanders. And it will be phased in order to cover ships in port and on station at sea. We will take what we learn through each phase and apply it as we progress. Tomorrow I'll be traveling to Yokosuka for discussions with 7th Fleet leadership and engage with the families of the U.S. John S. McCain there. Make no mistake, our sailors in these ships are doing critical work at sea, and for more than 70 years the U.S. Navy has helped guarantee the security and stability of the Western Pacific. All nations in this region and beyond have benefited from the resulting prosperity that their service has enabled. This work by our sailors is difficult, but it is incredibly important and enduring. We owe it to sailors that man Seventh Fleet and their families to answer the questions that flow from the uncertainty of what happened, how could it happen, and what can be done to prevent such occurrences in the future. We owe it to each and every one of them to pursue answers to these questions and others that may be on their mind. We are absolutely committed to doing just that. Thank you, and with that, I look forward to answering your questions. So I don't want to uh, to comment on any uh, specifics. The uh, the investigation is uh, in its very earliest uh, stages. Um, I've heard of these uh, reports of uh, potential uh, cyber attacks or cyber uh, interference. Uh, we've seen no indications uh, of that uh, as of yet, um, but I think the Chief of Naval Operations was very clear that um, we are not taking any uh, consideration off the table, and uh, every scenario will be uh, reviewed and investigated in detail. Uh, I'm sorry? Will there be a reform in the command chain? It, again, it's very early to make a, a determination of any actions, uh, what might be taken. Our focus is uh, on the uh, 10 sailors uh, that are missing. 
uh, on their families and of the crew of the USS uh, John McCain. And what's the, can I ask, with these kids Gerald, both the, the commander of the ship and the deputy were asleep at the time of the incident. We've been talking to some families of sailors in San Diego today, and they talked to uh, the Navy being understaffed and overworked, with too many demands and not enough resources. Is there an issue of negligence here, or is it just that your men and women are exhausted from overwork? Um, I think, uh, well, to the, your last question, I don't think that's the case at all. I don't. I was on McCain this morning, uh, looking at the eyes of those sailors, even after their. Uh, Heroic, uh, heroic efforts yesterday. Um, I didn't see uh, exhaustion. Uh, I didn't see a, uh, a crew that uh, um, was was taking a knee, uh, so so to speak. Um, they they are manning uh, the the USS John S. McCain. Um, they are on their game. Uh, they own that ship. Damage control efforts uh, continue. Uh, so that view is, is not a view that I see reflected to me uh, by the 140,000 sailors that man the Pacific Fleet uh, every day. As far as the question of uh, negligence uh, go, that will be a determination of the uh, investigation. And uh, along with the responsibility uh, and authority uh, comes accountability. And I think uh, the record of the United States Navy is clear on that. Um, we have a report uh, from the Malaysians. We're grateful for, uh, for the support that we continue to get um, from uh, really across the region. Uh, we have a report that they have found a body. Uh, we're in the process of uh, affecting the transfer of that body so we can uh, start the identification process and determine um, whether it's one of the missing sailors or not. Uh, there is one body that has been reported by the uh, Malaysian Navy has been found. We have discovered uh, other bodies during the diving on uh, McCain today, um, but it's, it's uh, premature to say uh, how many um, and what the status of recovery of those bodies is. And given the expanded area of search, are you confident that there will be survivors? Uh, given what is happening? So we're always hopeful that there are survivors. The SAR effort uh, continues. Um, I think the fruits of that effort are the fact that the Malaysians have uh, reported uh, recovering a body. Um, so until uh, we have exhausted uh, any uh, potential of uh, recovering uh, survivors or bodies, the uh, search and rescue efforts will continue.